You don't need to use AI to succeed as a creator, but should you? Let's talk about it. All right, this is normally when I would do my plug of I'm Jordan and blah, blah, blah. But I assume that most of the people who are watching this either already subscribed to my channel, cool, or don't care. And that's also totally fine. So instead of doing that, let's just get into generative AI and the creator economy because it's something that I've been meaning to talk about for a while. And I have a lot of thoughts on whether or not you actually need to be using AI as a creator. So to start off, let's talk about what generative AI is. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I talk a lot about artificial intelligence and to kind of set uh, groundwork for everyone. Artificial intelligence are systems that replicate human intelligence. Generative AI is a tool, a model, a technique, we could get into to more detail on, on exactly what that means. You can check out my backlog if you want more. But essentially for the creator sphere, it is a tool that you can use to create content. This includes creating images based on a data set of existing images. This includes creating voiceovers based on your own voice. This includes generating videos wholesale. I did a deep fake for Tom Scott like two years ago for less than $100. So. All of this falls under generative AI. Other things that fall into this that I think we don't think about as much tend to be the brainstorming and scripting process, helping you develop titles for videos, less so thumbnails. If anyone has found a good AI thumbnail service, let me know. I haven't seen a ton of that. And also editing. So this is something that's definitely in flux, I think, at the moment. As an aside, I'm filming this on... June 19th, 2023. Having done a bunch of media interviews around AI in the last year, I think that they should be dated with the time that you did the interview because often they come out a month later and things have changed. So I just wanted to put that up there. I'll probably put that somewhere down here so that people know. But there's certainly been a big influx of interest in general AI in the creator economy. And I think that you don't need to use it. This probably won't surprise you if you followed my channel before. I tend to be of the opinion that AI is a tool that you can use, but it's not a necessary tool. It's, it's a tool that if the thing that you are trying to do helps you accomplish that, then that's great. But if it doesn't, then I, I don't see a need to use it. it. It often feels like a hammer and search for a nail. And so if you are wondering whether or not as a creator you need to use gen ai my short answer is no please don't click out of the video <laughs> i have more thoughts my longer answer is that i think that for me it has been helpful in many ways which i'll get into and i think there's also a lot of things to be wary of and aware of as it comes to using these types of tools so at the end i'll also talk about the tools that i personally use i'd love to hear what you guys are using in the comments just to get a sense Let's actually start with the cons of using generative AI and content, because I feel like this is something that, this is a space that people aren't necessarily super aware of. And the first con is that the legal status of using generative AI is very much in flux at the moment. So for most tools, for most tools that you pay for, you can probably use it. It probably falls under fair use, but there's a lot of concerns around whether or not using copyrighted works create problems for that. You can see the Drake deepfake video, generative AI video that actually I'll put up. Marquez did a great video on this if you're curious. That's a great example of something where I don't know that you can really profit off of that because I think that someone could very reasonably make a legal claim to your profits. I think that Drake could make a very reasonable legal claim to your profits. I think that in a similar vein, if you are generating art that's in the style of a specific artist, that's probably also towing the line. But at the end of the day, the point that I'm getting at is that the legal status of these tools is very much up in the air. And I think that A, a lot of new YouTubers don't understand the legal landscape of using other things that were created by other people, but B, if you're a new YouTuber, you also may be taking a lot of liberties as it relates to things like fair use, which is the legal framework that in theory allows you to take works that were created and, and owned by other people in a legal sense and transform them or comment on them in some way that allows you to use them without having to license that content or, or compensate the person who originally made it. And 
I think that's how people are using a lot of generative AI these days, under the assumption that fairy supplies, and that's not set in stone. So that is my first, not necessarily con, but just thing to like be aware of when it comes to using Gen AI. Make sure you, if you're using an, an official tool that you're paying money for, make sure that you have looked into kind of the licensing side of things, because there are many tools that allow non-commercial use, certainly but don't allow commercial use. And if you're making a YouTube video that you're profiting off of, then it's probably commercial use. Another thing to be aware of when it comes to using generative AI, I'm gonna say Gen AI for the rest of the video, as a content creator is that, especially if you're using language models, these systems don't have inherent fact-checking mechanisms. So if you are using it to generate scripts, brainstorm ideas, come up with information, make sure to actually research that and make sure that you are saying something that is correct. There have been a ton of examples of people using Gen AI and putting things out in the world that are not true. So don't be that person because that sucks. And then the last thing that I'll say when it comes to, again, not necessarily a con of using Gen AI, I think that, as I mentioned up top, a lot of the marketing and hype around Gen AI is very much a hammer in search of a nail in a lot of cases. And so for my channel, obviously I make content about artificial intelligence. It makes sense for me to, to play with these tools and review them for you and, and, and incorporate them into my workflow. But if you're like a vlogger, like I have a vlog channel that is like super casual that I upload super inconsistently on. and. I don't use AI tools for that for the most part. I use Canva to make thumbnails, but that's about it. And I think that if you're, you know, a vlogger who loves their workflow and hasn't had any issues so far, I I wouldn't use this. When when I think about tools in content creation, I think about tools that make your content better. And if generative AI doesn't do that for you, then like I wouldn't feel pressured to use it just because. At the same time, if there's a cool idea that you can only make using AI, then like, yeah, maybe chase down that idea, obviously figure out the legal situation first, but I think that that's like totally reasonable. But the, the kind of thesis of this video is that I really don't think everyone needs to be using Gen AI in the first place. So now that we've gotten through that, let's talk about the pros of using generative AI. Personally, for me, the main pros are A, efficiency, and B, doing things that I don't want to do. <laughs> so actually three, I guess brainstorming is my third one. So I'm someone who verbally processes. I, I This might be an ADHD thing, I don't know. But when I'm scripting a video, it's easier for me to dictate a video than it is for me to write it out because it's easier for me to talk through ideas out loud then try to write it on a screen, which is why my videos are often outlined and then I get in front of the camera and just start talking like this one. I think that transcription tools, things like Otter have been awesome for this. I also think that when I'm trying to write a video and I'm running into writer's block, things like Notion AI, which I use a ton, can be really, really helpful for giving me something to work off of. I think for me, rarely do I actually use whatever that tool has written verbatim, but if I'm trying to figure out what I wanna write and I'm not coming up with anything, having something that I can riff off of is often very, very helpful for me. The other thing that I use it a ton for is basically things I don't like to do. And for me, that's editing. I hate editing. I've mentioned this in other videos. It's not my favorite thing. It's it's my least favorite part of being a content person, which is why I usually outsource it. And in particular, as shorts become a much bigger thing in the content space, I don't want to have to re-edit my long form videos into shorts. That's not very fun to me. I also don't like rough cutting my own videos because I it's just tedious and it takes a really long time. And so I use Descript, a tool that I mentioned in the past, to basically upload videos, pull out the whole transcript, edit down the transcript, and then use that as the raw cut that I can then send off to my editor. I'll also use things like Opus Pro to take existing videos and just give it, literally just put it there. I'll have a screenshot here. Put it there and then it will create shorts for me. I love Opus. It's a little bit hit or miss. There's still some editing that you often have to do, but 
it means that I don't have to cut my videos into shorts, which is something that I hate doing because I don't like editing and I also don't like having to go back through my own videos. So I think that when it comes to both the brainstorming process, I think that generative AI can be super helpful when it comes to the kind of efficiency of content creation process, it can be super helpful. At the same time, I have no plans to stop using an editor <laughs> for my videos. I think that this video was probably edited by me, I'll confirm that below, but I'm not a good editor. Many of these tools would not make me a better editor. I hope my editor uses these kinds of tools to help expedite their workflow and allow them to be more creative and things like that. But like, these tools are not putting my editor personally out of a job, I don't think. So this is all to say that I don't think that if you're making content, you need to use generative AI tools. I think that if in, in the process of making content that you really want to make, you find these tools useful, then like use them. Be aware of, of the limitations of how they can be used, but certainly use them. At the same time, I think that if you're just using Gen AI tools for the sake of using them, you know, you see a lot of, of talk about people having ChatGPT and then places like Eli generate full videos and then going viral off of that. And it doesn't really seem to actually work. And if you'd like to see a video on that, actually, let me know down below, because this is something that I've been, I've been following for a while and it's been very interesting to, for me to watch because I feel like there's a lot of Twitter threads being like, here's how you can make a million dollars a month if you have AI generate all your videos. And then I like look at people who are doing that and they're definitely not making a million dollars a month, I promise. And also their videos are like not good. And I've tried this workflow before and the videos are generally like not good. So if that's something you're interested in hearing about, let me know. And so as we close the curtain on our discussion of AI and content creation, I wanted to share with you guys a personal journey of mine. Um, it's a journey with brilliant.org, which is our sponsor for this video. And they've been a huge part of my own journey as an AI educator. Brilliant's more than just a learning platform. It's a tool for reaching your learning goals and transforming the way that you think about math, computer science, and so much more. The course that really had an impact on me was the Neural Networks course. It dissected these complex concepts into digestible parts, allowing me to interact, experiment, and truly grasp the underlying principles. And if today's topic about AI and content creation and if today's topic about AI and content creation has sparked an interest in AI in you, Brilliant is the way to keep that spark alive and turn it into a flame of knowledge. They offer thousands of lessons from foundational math to AI, data science, neural networks, and more with new content added regularly. It's interactive, it's engaging, and it allows you to learn while doing. What's more, Brilliant has designed their courses to fit into the busy lives that we all lead. You can master topics in as little as 15 minutes a day from your phone, tablet, or computer. And you're not alone in this journey. Brilliant is like a personal learning coach supporting you every step of the way, helping you track your progress and keep your learning on the right path. So if you're ready to start your learning journey today and equip yourself with the skills to understand and perhaps even dive into the world of AI, head over to brilliant.org slash Jordan or click on the link in the description down below. You'll get a free 30 day trial and the first 200 of you to use that link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Let me know and otherwise I'll see you in the next one. Bye.